Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. This is our monthly tech meet, and we're going to be working on Silver Shadow height control components. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for coming. We're going to be working on some height control parts for Silver Shadows. Uh, this is not the same as the Silver Spirit by any way. Um, this is one of the valves. This is a control valve, height control valve. And this one happens to be the right rear. Okay. This has hydraulic high pressure coming from an accumulator, the number two system, coming into it actually through this. This is the height control fast action solenoid, or just a height control solenoid. What this does is you've got that really high pressure coming from the accumulators, and so that when you're driving down the car, the system doesn't react because what it does is it levels the car. It has a slow and a fast action mode. Now the slow action mode is just static. This, you know, it has two, three lines going to it. Um, so you got your high pressure in, and then it, it it goes through the two different ports, I think, into the system. Once this is activated with the electrics, uh, then it goes into fast action, so that the car it's designed so when the car is in uh, neutral or park or the doors open, that People are getting in, and if the car is running, it makes the car level right away. Uh, well, this was used on the cars from 1966 7 all the way up to 1980. Silver Shadow. Okay. And uh, early cornices, obviously, and drop heads. So, this is your height control solenoid. This is a control valve. There are two of these, one of these, and then these are, this is a restrictor valve. It has to do with the flow in and out of these things, and it, it reduces the amount of volume. Um, there are two of these also, on two different parts of the circuit. So the most common problem for these is for this valve to leak. And there's a left and a right, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart. I'm going to show you how it works. Um, and it's got a bag of O-rings to go in it. Here we go. Lots of little O-rings. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start. So this valve itself is mounted to the subframe, so it's rigid. This link here, which you can see is adjustable, is mounted to a trailing arm. That's the big arm that goes back that swings up and down with the wheel. So the way it works is when the wheel goes up, in other words, weight is added to the car, this arm goes up and it'll activate the system and then there's on top of the springs there are rams. I don't have a ram out here, we did that on another video. But what that does is push down on the spring so it lifts the car. Um, and like I said, these leak, that's the biggest thing with these. Sometimes they won't work right, but it's always a, a challenge to figure out, hey Robert, um, challenge to figure out what that is. So here's how we take them apart. When you take them off the car, generally you leave these two lines on because they're inaccessible when it's on the car. They're buried. And they usually go to a junction block down here. You can undo them here. Uh, there is a hose coming out of the top that goes to the plumbing that goes to the ram. And then there's a, hose, or a steel line coming in the bottom. That's the high pressure end. So you take those off, take these off. This is bolted to the, to the subframe. And then you disconnect this link. This link has balls that it goes on to. They're like um, just a sphere that with a stud on it. So it goes in with a ball and then you tighten up the, the screw here to lock it in to keep it from coming off. And it's lubricated and has these cool little boots to keep the grease in and the, the garbage out. So the first step I do is this valve itself can be assembled wrong obviously, but this housing is designed for both sides. So you see this arm comes out this side. This is for the right side. On the left, do I have this right? Yes, this is the, the right side. On the other side, the arm's on the opposite side. So the difference is this shaft that going through here, you can put it in the wrong way. So rather than do that, uh, I always mark the housing. I take and just scratch it. Right there, I put a little X on there so I know that the shaft sticks out this side of the housing. Because we're gonna take this all apart. And then also, as you can see, this has a cinch bolt here. So this arm can be put anywhere on this shaft. And you're still going to have to adjust it when you put it back on, but I always just scribe a mark 
so that I know uh, the approximate position of it. So now that I scratched that mark and I can't see it, it's time to put on the glasses. So I start by pulling this arm off. Of course, excuse me. Robert's back. <laughs> so now I'm going to slide this off, hopefully. The working pressure, this normal operating, I think, is about 1,800 to 2,200. It tries to maintain in between those. So there's that. There's your cinch bolt. And now you can see the shaft that it goes on. You can see it's got a flat on here, so you've only got so much adjustment, but you want to get it as close as possible. So now what I do is I'm going to clamp this in the vise like this. We're going to take apart this end. This upper, upper fitting here, is, I take that out and I disconnect the line completely. And what's nice about this is it's hard to mix it up because the next one is attached to uh, a housing that has a snap ring in it. So do is take the snap ring out. There we go. So you can see there's a snap ring there. And then this thing, it should just turn and pull out. Once again, I don't have the tool I need. So I've got it. Okay, so as you can see, this, this line does screw into something, but it just there's no sense taking that apart because you're just going to pull this off and do that. There's an O-ring in there. There's that. So now we're, what we're going to do is start loosening things up here. We've got these big nuts. There we go there. We'll go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to grab it here. What's the fluid? Brake fluid. This is a brake fluid system car. Okay. So we'll take these apart. I usually do this for my mechanics and just throw all this stuff on the bench so that they can't remember how to do it. Oh, and I try to teach them, but it's hard. I just started, I was telling Steve, I just started the well, that was you. Uh, I just started doing videos so that they can remember how to do stuff. So we'll take this, what we'll do is we'll lay this out like it's coming apart. Let's orient ourselves here. So this one's the bottom one, this is the top one. That's that piece, this goes with this. All right. So as you can see, this piece, here's the parts. It's got a spring in there, all right? And that one looks a little different, doesn't it? It's got a spring. So what we'll do, we gotta split this housing. And most often they leak from the sides here. Sometimes they'll leak from the split here. This 
section you say more <coughs> is more prone to leaking than what you're taking apart now. Can you replace the O ring or the, without taking it completely apart? No. The whole thing has to come off the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, the, the place that they're at on the car is very hard to get to. It's hard enough to get them out. Uh, but in these side O rings, you can't really get to them. There's, It has to come apart, and there's a lot more parts in here than you might think. 